I'm Dr. Paul Inman. This is Dr. Linda Bradley from the Cleveland Clinic, and we're at the AAGL meeting in Washington, D.C. Uh, Linda, as an expert in fibroids, I'm going to ask you one of the most perplexing dilemmas that I have, and that is women with fibroids, little, big, and they've been told, well, you really should get them out, or they want to know, should I get these out before I attempt pregnancy? I'd like to get pregnant in a few months, but I'm really afraid these fibroids are going to cause problems. When would you recommend taking them out before pregnancy? Yeah, it's a very tricky question, and Mother Nature does better than doctors for the most part. So we usually want, we tell patients 85% of women who are under 35 are going to be pregnant within a year. So certainly given you're just starting, we let Mother Nature have a tincture of time. We also will begin to evaluate the female anatomy um, for, um, to see if the fibroids might cause a problem, for instance. Um, are the fibroids creating pressure on the tube so that you have tubal occlusion, the tubes are closed? That would be a potential reason, a strong reason for removal of the fibroids, even in an asymptomatic patient, um, if she's having difficulty getting pregnant. Or if there's a fibroid actually in the cavity of the uterus, we just, you know, the intracavitary. If the cavity is normal, meaning there's no um, lesions there, uh, then we leave everything alone and are very, very reluctant to recommend myomectomy in an asymptomatic patient who has never been pregnant and just beginning to try. So you're just coming in, you have a 14-week size uterus, you want to start trying next month. We're going to do um, a check. We can do an earlier check. Normally we would even wait a year if you're 28. We don't do anything, okay, normal periods and all of that. Someone's really concerned that the most uh, that we might do would be a hysterosalpingogram and also to check for tubal patency and to determine if there's something inside the cavity, either using saline infusion or office hysteroscopy. Okay. Now, often the decision is very simple. If you have a fiber that's primarily in the cavity, uh, we know that removing that with a resectoscope really in improves fertility. Now, let me run one situation by you, a woman I saw very recently. So this is real, she's 39 years old, has been trying to get pregnant for approximately four months. Now, before she tried to get pregnant, she, well, she has about a 10 centimeter myoma. Uh, it's primarily within the wall, but on ultrasound, you can see it, the endometrium is draped over, and it does cause some distortion of the cavity. Okay. Uh, someone went tempted to do a myomectomy. They were, took out two little myomas and said that's too big and, clo uh, and closed her up. Didn't, obviously, that person didn't know how to do a myomectomy. That's okay. another story. So here she is in my office with a 10-centimeter myoma, slightly indenting the cavity. She's 39 years old, so any cycle may be her last. Uh, what should she do? Should she have a myomectomy? That's a decision I'm trying to make right now. Okay. This woman. Well, it's a very hard decision. If it is distorting the cavity and it's 10 centimeters, then yes, myomectomy would be offered to that patient. Okay. Do you think that if there's just now a slight distortion, it's definitely not something that, let's say that 15% is in the cavity. Okay. Tubes are open? Haven't done an HSG, but we'll be getting an MRI. Okay. We also, again, look at, you can, certainly that's, those are all excellent things that you're doing, but tubal patency would be an easy test to do. Okay. And among patients who, and, um, and among patients who um, have distortion with that history and that age, we might bite the bullet and recommend a surgical intervention, okay. which would be a myomectomy. As a surgeon, if it is very close to the endometrial cavity, we have to be very careful that we are not peeling off taking off endometrium. So you want to make sure, at least that we do, that we do not put those patients on, loop, on a medication. Right. And we really take special care to know if the endometrium was entered. Because you take off too much endometrium, if it is really draping over it, there's a potential then really causing scar tissue. It's a very tenuous situation. Right, it's a difficult decision for me. I think the hysterosalpingogram is an excellent uh, idea. Uh, and we'll certainly, uh, look into that. Okay, well thank you very much. That's Dr. Linda Bradley, Paul Inman from the AAGL meeting in Washington, D.C.